Chapter 7 His Comrades One of the signs given to the nation of Israel for them to identify their Messiah and King is that he will set those in spiritual bondage free those who were possessed with devils. He would have the ability to cast out devils. This was important to Israel and their kingdom promises because they knew Satan had been opposing them all this time and that in the kingdom Satan would be powerless because their king would cast Satan and his devils out of the land. Revelations chapter 12 tells us just what will happen in the spirit realm during the middle of the tribulation period. Revelation 12 verses 1 to 5 And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars, and she being with child cried, traveling in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God, and to his throne. Notice how in this account of the birth of the man-child, the devils are referred to as stars being cast down to the earth. Matthew 4 verse 1, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness, to be tempted of the devil. Why did the Spirit of God lead Jesus to be tempted if as the Bible says, God does not tempt any man? First of all, Jesus is not just any man. He is the Son of God. Secondly, Jesus must be tempted in all points as we are in order to be our Savior. Matthew 4 verses 2 to 11, And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward and hung red. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and sheweth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Satan knows that Jesus will be the king of kings, and so he offers him what is going to be his one day anyway, except Satan is offering them to Jesus without having to go to the cross. He offered a crown without the cross. It is obvious that Satan wanted to be worshipped and agreed to make Jesus his second in command as long as he bows down and worships him. Jesus would have no part of this, and now it is Satan who will forcibly bow to the Son of God one day. Amen. Everywhere Jesus went, he was confronted with those possessed with devils, and he healed them as a sign to a nation that began with signs that were given unto Moses for them. Matthew 4 verses 23 to 24, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria. And they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. Notice it is the gospel of the kingdom and not the gospel of the grace of God that we preach today. The devil will be bound in the kingdom, so Jesus is showing them that he is their Messiah by casting out demons. Devils were very prevalent during this period, as they will be again during the tribulation period when the gospel of the kingdom is preached again. Matthew 9 verses 32 to 34, As they went out, behold, they brought to him a dumb man, possessed with a devil. And when the devil was cast out, the dumb spake, and the multitudes marveled, saying, It was never so seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, He casteth out devils, through the prince of the devils. Devils have the power to cause a person to be unable to speak, and as you can see the moment the devil was cast out of this person, he could speak again. Matthew 12 verses 22 to 32 Then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind, and dumb, and he healed him, insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. And all the people were amazed, and said, Is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. And Jesus knew their thoughts, and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself, 
how shall then his kingdom stand? And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Or else how can one enter into a strong man's house, and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man? And then he will spoil his house. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. This is a very important part of our study here, because not only did the dumb speak and the blind see, but in Jesus' answer to the Pharisees, he tells us what I have been saying about why he was demonstrating his power over the devils. It was because a Satan would one day be bound, so these devils were cast out of these individuals. Matthew 13 verses 36 to 43, Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man, the field is the world, the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil, the harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire, there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. This is added to show us that God has a place of punishment for Satan and his devils that will last for eternity. Mark 7 verses 24 to 30, And from thence he arose, and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon, and entered into an house, and would have no man know it, but he could not be hid. For a certain woman, whose young daughter had an unclean spirit, heard of him, and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. But Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled, for it is not meet to take the children's bread, and to cast it unto the dogs. And she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord, yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. And he said unto her, for this saying go thy way, the devil is gone out of thy daughter. And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out, and her daughter laid upon the bed. Jesus did not want anyone to know he was in that area, because he was not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Tyre and Sidon are in modern-day Lebanon. He did however have a divine appointment with one Gentile who understood that salvation was of the Jews, and the only way she as a non-Jew could be blessed was by the crumbs that would fall from the Jews' table so to speak. Luke 4 verses 33 to 36, And in the synagogue, there was a man, which had a spirit of an unclean devil, and cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him, and hurt him not. And they were all amazed, and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power, he commandeth the unclean spirits, and they come out. The devils, as these verses indicate, knew who Jesus was, and the power that he possessed. They also knew that he had the power to cast them into the lake of fire one day. Matthew 17 verses 14 to 21, And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man, kneeling down to him, and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic, and sore vexed. For oft times he falleth into the fire, and oft into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart, and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. In the next passage, we learn two important lessons from the words of the devils themselves as they are about to be cast out by Jesus. Mark 5 verses 1 to 20, And they came over unto the other side of the sea, 
into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains, and in the tombs, crying, and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice, and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God, that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about two thousand winky face and were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled, and told it in the city, and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus, and see him that was possessed with the devil, and had the legion, sitting, and clothed, and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil, and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coasts. And when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and hath had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. We learn here that the devils want a warm body to possess, and more importantly, they want to remain in the land where they were sent. Jesus allows them their request of a warm body, but it does not turn out so well for them as the bodies are those of some nearby pigs who after the devils enter them, they all commit suicide. John 6 verses 70 to 71 Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spake of Judas Iscariot the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. Was Judas a fallen angel, that had for a time taken on fleshly form? No, Judas was alike you and I, made of flesh and bones, but Judas was given over to the devil to be used by him because he first gave himself over to him. John 13 verse 2, and supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Matthew 26 verses 14 to 16, then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priests, and said unto them, What will ye give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they covenanted with him for thirty pieces of silver. And from that time, he sought opportunity to betray him. Judas was a thief the Bible says, for he had the bag. And when he figured, Jesus wasn't going to ascend to his throne because of all his talk about going to his father. Judas now possessed by the devil, thought he might as well get a little money out of this. John 13 verse 27, And after the sop, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest, do quickly. John 17 verse 12, While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name, those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Judas here is called the son of perdition, this is a phrase reserved exclusively for him and Satan himself. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. John 18 verses 1 to 6, When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Cedron, where was a garden, into the which he entered, and his disciples. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Jesus oft times resorted thither with his disciples. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth, and said unto them, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. As soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward, and fell to the ground. He is the father of lies. John 8 verse 44, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. The last recorded incidents of people being possessed by devils in the Bible are found in the book of Acts when Paul, 
the apostle to Gentiles, cast a spirit of divination out of a young damsel, and when seven exorcists got beat up by one, literally, Acts 16 verse 16, and it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. Acts 19 verses 11 to 16, and God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. And there were seven sons of one Siva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul the first know, but who are ye? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, and overcame them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house, naked and wounded. We do not hear about evil spirits again until Revelation chapter 16, when they go out to deceive the kings of the earth, to fight against Christ. Chapter 8. His Crushing. What looked to be Satan's greatest victory, as God's Son hung on a cross, turned out to be his biggest defeat. Because with the resurrection of Christ, he unknowingly aided in the creation of a new creature, class of people that are neither Jews nor Gentiles. Ephesians 2 verse 15, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. This one new man is neither Jew, nor Gentile, but a new creature, who would upon death inherit the heavens, while Israel under the first covenant is promised to inherit the earth. Galatians 3 verse 28, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Because of Christ's resurrection, all that believe solely in his death, burial, and resurrection, for their salvation, have a new eternal destiny. The believer's destiny today is in the heavenlies, the very place where Satan had his sights set on when he uttered his infamous five I wills, Isaiah 14 verses 13 to 14. Prior to the cross, when a person died that was a believer, they went to Abraham's bosom, paradise, and Satan was well aware of that fact, but with the resurrection of Christ, Jesus defeated death once and for all, and it could no longer have dominion over the believer. The Old Testament saints will rule and reign with Christ on earth for a thousand years, along with the twelve apostles and all those who were saved under the preaching of the gospel of kingdom. Israel has an earthly destiny, while the church has a heavenly destiny. I know some of you are saying, what about Jesus leading captivity captive? What about it? That verse does not say what many force it to say. It says what it says and it means exactly what it means. When Jesus died on the cross, he immediately went to Abraham's bosom, but not to take up a prolonged residence there. He went there on a mission to take the keys of death and hell from Satan. He went there to make an open show of the devils triumphing over them in a grand victory parade, just as a general would do after a great victory over an hated enemy. It was a humiliating experience for Satan and his devilish army. Colossians 2 verse 15, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a shoe of them openly triumphing over them in it. Hebrews 2 verse 14, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. Jesus Christ literally manifested himself as a man, so that he might destroy the works of the devil. 1 John 3 verse 8, He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Chapter 9. His Chief. Luke introduces us to the ringleader of a group of murderers in this chapter that were just pawns in Satan's war against what God was doing on earth at that time. Satan had taken over the land that God had promised Israel, through Rome, because Israel had become a rebellious people. He led the religious leaders to crucify their Savior, and now he had his sights on this remnant of Jews that were following the apostles. Satan goes after them with a vengeance, using the most religious man he could find to do the job. Saul of Tarsus, a Pharisee, of Pharisees. No one would have expected that Satan's accomplice to the murder of Stephen, would one day become one of Satan's greatest enemies. Especially not Satan. Acts 7 verse 58, And cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. He is mentioned again in the following chapter in only one sentence as the one that consented unto the death of Stephen. Acts 8 verse 1, And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, 
except the apostles. We start to learn more of this man beginning in chapter 9, especially as Peter begins to fade into obscurity in Acts chapter 13 amid the Jewish remnant and Paul becomes the prominent servant used by God to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. Acts 9 verses 1 to 5 And Saul yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest, and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? Who was it that Saul was breathing out threatenings and slaughter, persecution, against? The disciples of the Lord. So, if Saul would have thought about that for a second, he would have never asked such a question. Who else but God could zoom in on Saul with a light from heaven and speak to him without being physically present? He kind of already knew the answer because if you will notice Saul calls him Lord, Master, before he gets his answer because it is obvious to him that he is not just dealing with some Christian that he is chasing. Acts 19 verses 5 to 6 And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Oh, what a convicting response to hear on that day as Saul wrote about seeking in his own zeal and self-righteousness to rid Judaism of this perceived threat to their very way of life. Saul thought he was doing God's service only to find out that he was fighting the very thing he thought he was trying to defend. Acts 19 verses 7 to 9, And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the man which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man, but they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. Notice here that Saul does not hesitate, argue, or even question Jesus, because he is now his Lord. No longer does he serve the high priest in Jerusalem, nor the sect known as the Pharisees. What thoughts must have been going through his head? He no doubt came to the realization that he was a murderer. He also must have spent a considerable amount of time on his way thinking of how his nation's leaders, of which he was a part of, had killed the Messiah. I believe Saul probably did not eat or drink because of these very reasons. What a terrible time of reflection Saul must have experienced during those three days that he was blinded by the presence of the Lord. If Saul would have been able to see at least, it would have provided some momentary visual distractions from the almost constant thoughts of his sin and those of his beloved nation. Acts 19 verses 10 to 12 And there was a certain disciple at Damascus, named Ananias, and to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas, for one called Saul, of Tarsus. For, behold, he prayeth, and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias, coming in, and putting his hand on him, that he might receive his sight. I will bet Saul was praying like he never prayed before. A lot of tears were shed those three days in the house of Judas. I am not sure how much joy Saul had during those three days, thinking of the damage he had caused in the lives of so many. He must have spent some time rejoicing with tears in his eyes that God would choose to save someone who had done what he had done. Isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful? Acts 19 verses 13 to 16, Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man, how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priests, to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles, and kings, and the children of Israel. For I will shew him how great things he must suffer, for my name's sake. Notice here that God tells Ananias that Saul is a chosen vessel, and that he is to bear his name before the Gentiles, these two statements we will look at in greater detail in the upcoming chapters. Saul was uniquely chosen as the apostle of the Gentiles, and the one to whom God would impart many mysteries concerning the church. What does scripture teach us about Paul? Romans 11 verse 13, For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. Notice that it does not say Paul was an apostle to the Gentiles, but rather the apostle of the Gentiles. There is a big difference as we shall see from other portions of scripture that Paul is our pattern during the church age. 1 Timothy 1 verse 1 Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the commandment of God our Savior, 
and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. 11 According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. Notice that Paul says that the gospel was committed to his trust. This was not the gospel of the kingdom that was preached by the disciples during the earthly ministry of Christ, but was rather the gospel of the grace of God, the death, burial, and resurrection 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1-4, 1 Timothy 1 verses 12-14 And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer, and a persecutor, and injurious, but I obtained mercy, because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. Who could God show more abundant grace to than Saul? No one. This will be made clear to you after reading the next couple of verses. We should show the same abundant grace towards the religious Jews, who need mercy, for their ignorance of the truth. 1 Timothy 1 verse 15, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Paul's statement that he was the chief of sinners was a comment that referred to his being the leader of the opposition against the church. Paul was a very moral person. His standards would put many Christians to shame today. Because Paul's attacks against the church was more zealous than any other man alive, he became the chief of sinners because he was the leader of the rebellion against God's church. 1 Timothy 1 verse 16, Howbeit for this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might shew forth all long-suffering, for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Paul is the first person that Jesus Christ showed forth all long-suffering to, and he became the pattern for us Gentiles during the church age as the apostle of the Gentiles. The twelve apostles were patterns for the nation of Israel at that time. Where sin does abound, grace does much more abound. Paul was the chief sinner, and therefore, the perfect recipient of God's exceeding abundant grace. If Paul can be saved, anyone can be. 1 Corinthians 11 verses 1 to 2 Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances, as I delivered them to you. Philippians 4 verse 9 Those things, which ye have both learned, and received, and heard, and seen in me, do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Again, Paul tells us to follow his teachings and his example in this age of grace. To try and follow kingdom theology during the church age will create much confusion. 2 Timothy 2 verses 7 to 10, Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, wherein I suffer trouble, as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sakes, that they may also obtain the salvation, which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Here Paul is specifically referring to the elect of Israel, that will also be saved. He is not referring to future Gentile believers as the elect. Paul mentions them both at the same time, but differentiates between the two, so as to help us rightly divide the two and keep our doctrine straight. Notice how that Paul says that Christ was raised according to his gospel, the gospel of the grace of God. The kingdom gospel had no reference to the death, burial, or resurrection in it. Check it out for yourselves, do not take my word for it. The twelve apostles did not believe the report that Christ was risen, because they were not expecting it. After his resurrection, Christ opened their eyes to that truth. Read Luke 9 45, 18 34, and 24, colon 44, 46. Luke 9 verse 45, But they understood not this saying, and it was hid from them, that they perceived it not and they feared to ask him of that saying. Luke 18 verse 34, And they understood none of these things, and this saying was hid from them, neither knew they the things which were spoken. Luke 24 verses 44 to 46, And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you, while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms, concerning me. Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures, and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoved Christ to suffer, and to rise from the dead the third day. 2 Timothy 4 verses 16 to 18 At my first answer no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. Notwithstanding the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. People thought that the words Paul was initially speaking were foolish, 
and no one stood with him until God by his Spirit revealed it unto the other apostles. Notice verse 17 says that it would be by him that the preaching, doctrine, might be fully known, understood. Do not get mad at me, Paul said that, not me. Chapter 10, His Destiny The book of the revelation of Jesus Christ has more information concerning the destiny of our adversary Satan than do all the other books of the Bible combined. Currently according to Ephesians 6, 12 we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That is where Satan is today. But when the rapture occurs, Satan will only have three and a half years before he will lose all his heavenly principalities from which he and his minions rule over this evil world. He will try to kill as many people as he possibly can before he is cast into the bottomless pit. He will especially set his sights on the nation of Israel during this time. Revelation 12 verses 6 to 12 And the woman, Israel, fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. And there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation, and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Here we have the retaking of heaven by Michael and his angels, a large portion of which was under the direct control of Satan and the angels that followed him in his rebellion. All the thrones and dominions that were usurped on that day when Satan uttered his infamous five, I wills in Isaiah 14, 12 to 15 would now be occupied by the new class of people that were neither Jews nor Gentiles, but the one new man. Ephesians 2 verse 15, Paul tells us that they are a new creature, also called the one new man who are able to dwell in the heavens upon their death, unlike the Jews of old that will soon inherit the earth during the millennial reign of Christ. The heavens are the future abode of the church, which is Christ's body. Revelation 12 verses 12 to 17, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time, and times, and half a time, from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth, and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Here we see the beginning of the end for Satan as the kingdom begins, but he will be released for a season at the end of the kingdom before he will finally be cast into the lake of fire forever. This will be the fulfillment of the prophecy program. The mystery program will have already been completed at the rapture. Always remember that the mystery program is associated with the church, which is Christ's body, and it is revealed only in the writings of the Apostle Paul, Romans through Philemon. Revelation 20 verses 1 to 3, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season, at the end of the millennial kingdom. Revelation 20 verses 7 to 10, And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, 
and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Hopefully, this study has caused you to want to study deeper into the things of God, especially concerning the mystery program which is found in the writings of the Apostle Paul. If you are interested in getting a good understanding of God's program for all ages, I strongly recommend you study the following three courses, Matthew, Acts, and lastly, Paul, the Apostle of the Gentiles. These are three companion books that complement one another and will help you see God's whole plan from a much clearer angle than you may have ever seen before.